The Disney logo, as recently as 19 years ago, used to get in and out within 13 seconds. And you bet your ass I'm sending this movie because modern Disney logos abandon this sensible approach in favor of 30 plus seconds of self fellatio Reading. Will you take a look at that? Pretty pathetic, huh? All narration deserves a sin, but some narration deserves extra sins. And David Spade narration definitely falls into that category. I don't have time to go into it all right now, but it involves a bowling ball, three pounds of ground beef, and a random night in February 2002. Just trust me, he has these sins coming. I was the world's nicest guy and they ruined my life for no reason. Unreliable narrators. Long before Cusco knew he would be a llama, he had a llama comb and a llama rocker. Apparently his folks used the always controversial foreshadowing style of parenting. I am offended by the rapid fire royal responsibility montage here. We're trying to show how lazy he is, but ultimately I blame the society that has encouraged that laziness. An enigma and a mystery in Mesoamerican history. Peru is not a part of Mesoamerica. That's right, we're doing geography sins today, and if you don't like it, you can shove it up your atlas. Cusco is a dick. I guess. I mean, whatever I have to say to get through this awful opening song. I'm sorry, but you've thrown off the Emperor's groove. Close enough, let's roll credits. Also, actual attempted murder. This Lord of the Dance bull goes on for some time. It is time for you to choose your bride. What is it with Disney and old-fashioned marriage practices? It's a major plot point in approximately 58% of their animated films. I threw off the Emperor's groove. That guy didn't die. He landed safely wrapped up in a banner flag on a bridge. Beware the groove. That might be difficult, because if I've learned one thing from D-Light, it's already in my heart. This is Yzma, the Emperor's advisor, living proof that dinosaurs once roamed the Earth. Old people are old, and that is hilarious. Every decade or so, she gets a new one. This year's model is called Kronk. Does she get a new one every decade or every year? Make up your mind, movie. Look at these wrinkles. What is holding this woman together? God damn, this movie hates old people just for existing. So, how does that work with you being fired and all? The only ones who know about that are the three of us. Well, there was that guy who wrote up the pink slip, so you better find a way to murder him, too. Pull the lever, Kronk. Well, that's just bad lever design. I always suggest setting your trap door and secret layer entrance standing spots at least 15 feet away from each other. Just like the 60s Batman on TV, this slide ride down to the secret layer somehow changes their clothes on the way down without slowing any momentum. I get we're playing by Looney Tunes rules here, but at least give logic a passing glance occasionally. I'll turn him into a flea, then I'll put that flea in a box, and then I'll put that box inside of another box, and then I'll mail that box to myself, and when it arrives, I'll smash it with a hammer! That is a garbage plan, and by involving the Postal Service, you've made your crime a federal one. It's dinner time! They are hundreds, if not thousands of feet underground. Why the f*** would there be lightning down here? Oh, right. The poison. The poison for Cusco. The poison chosen specially to kill Cusco. Cusco's poison. Scenes like this are why this movie is, checks notes, 78 minutes long. This f***ing thing is only 78 minutes long, and we have scenes like this in it? This is a f***ing short film idea you assholes stretched into a feature, you dicks. A few drops in his drink, then I'll propose a toast. Why the f would he sit down to dinner with you tonight after firing your scheming ass earlier in the day? I am one hungry king in the world. What James Cameron says about an hour before lunch each day. This salad is comprised of oak leaves and cherry tomatoes so large they are almost certainly plumps. So, he seems nice. He's what, in his late 20s? Movie seems to be indicating that part of Kronk's job is servicing Yzma's old groove. And FYI, the internet absolutely confirms it. Cusco doesn't notice that his neck just extended two feet, even though his vision perspective had to have changed as well. He just keeps talking. This movie is f***ing lazy. Guess where I am right now? In a vocal booth in Burbank, continuing to rely on narration to do the heavy lifting of this movie? I am so glad I was unconscious for all of this. Thing I wish I could say about the movie ends up in the movie. Shoulder morality cliche. Raise number two. Look what I can do. What does that have to do with it? No, no. Kronk would amazingly be excellent at cinema sense. Um, what's with the chimp and the bug? The bug's legit, but yeah, there are no chimps in Peru, so... It's Cusco, it's Cusco, it's fun, it's a wonderful toy. It's fun for a girl or a boy. Hope that doesn't come back to haunt me. Kronk shadowing. That's not as impressive as my loose tooth. See? <laughs> me sideways. This is a horror film. This movie suggests this guy is poor, but he has two hot tubs. Uh, hi. All right, movie. You've now turned your narration into a complete fourth wall break. I think you think you're Deadpool, and I know Deadpool. Deadpool is a friend of mine, and you, sir, are not Deadpool. Also, considering we know he eventually gets unlamaed, is he telestrating this movie with us before the end of the story has even happened? Look, movie, anthropomorphic transformation is one thing, but now you're messing with the laws of time and space, so you might want to calm your meta a bit. Huh? That is somehow the first time this llama bag has made a noise or moved since they left the palace, which is some bull I know you. You're that whiny peasant. Emperor Cusco? How the f did he recognize the voice? That is a David Copperfield level of what the f man. Holy 
What is this monstrosity? The spikes, the headplate. Did I miss the part where this takes place in Pandora's version of Peru? What the hell is up with the wildlife in this jungle? Hit the road, Bucky. Something I yell at the screen during most MCU movies somehow makes it into the movie. First, how did he fall into the center of these panthers without bumping any or waking any of them up? But second, and most importantly, panthers aren't pack animals. Movie doesn't even know how to panther correctly. Though it's a fairly well-documented fact that the squirrel population of Peru has a predilection for balloon art, they have never been known to use red balloons because of their instinctual association of red as the color of death. So close, movie. So close. Ha! Sending the fact that this movie thinks a llama could outrun a pack of leopard jaguar panthers for any length of time. I hate you. Feelings mutual, buddy. I mean, there's a metric ton of sh they survive. It's obscene, really. Don't tell me. We're about to go over a huge waterfowl. Yep. Sharp rocks at the bottom? Most likely. Bring it on. Look, this movie is all sorts of ridiculous, but let's be honest here. Chris Farley's sidekick is absolutely perfect in this role, and his dry sarcasm is probably the reason that somehow this thing ends up working. You, dude. Come on, breathe. Discount CPR. All right. Oh, I see. He knew CPR was required, but still did the slapping thing first because why again? I'm not sure exactly when we should have been done with the people misinterpret mouth to mouth as a kiss trope, but it may actually have predated color film. Someday you're going to wind up all alone and you'll have no one to blame but yourself. This is the same thing I said to my college girlfriend shortly before she my roommate. This movie suggests that doing nice selfless gestures for egomaniacal heads of state will make them rethink their selfishness and... <laughs> Why would the now presumed dead emperor's former advisor automatically take the throne if he disappears? I had a dream that Thad was tied to a log and was careening out of control down a raging river of- Wow, that actually happened. So this kid has clairvoyant dreams after the fact and way too late to make a difference, which is weird, no? Well, in my dream, Dad had to kiss a llama. All these f***ing kids clairvoyant? Don't shake unless you mean it. Fun fact, don't shake unless you mean it was the title of the woman's sexuality course I taught for a semester on the importance of the authentic female orgasm. Well, I was gonna have you in prison for life, but I kinda like this better. So the fake nice Cusco lasted exactly one minute of film time, and now we're immediately back to the llama drama. The movie will eventually try and make us believe that his heart was changing this whole time, but his actions are firmly in the sociopath who should never be trusted category. So all of it was a lie? You mean that shit he told you literally one minute ago? That conversation literally just happened. God, this movie wants to have beats without earning a single one of them. <laughs> Delayed gravity. Fucking hell. Who's right? You're right or, or mine? I don't care. Mine. Well, why yours? Okay, you're right. Ready? Okay, got it. Not that it matters, since you both just do your own right foot. Anyway, it's almost like that conversation was more for humorous bickering's sake than actual practical instruction. Why are there so many scorpions on this tree branch? These bats, when scared, fly directly into a llama's mouth. Life finds a way, I guess. This works. Well, better get going. But your bridge is gone, and you are 20,000 feet up in the peaks of this mountain range. Where do you better get going to exactly? I hate this jungle. Then why did you get out of your cronkmobile? No one made you. You said you were tired, which makes no sense, because you're literally just riding, and this is clearly an excuse for the highest of jinx. Squeaky, uh, squeak, squeaker. Ten seconds ago, you were carrying on a fluent conversation with this squirrel in English. Not sure why you need to play translator now when it can clearly understand what she's saying. Well, that's a very specific singular exclusion to make. Bring in any animal you want, just not a llama. It's almost like they knew they were coming. Please, with this disguise, I'm invisible. Look, I wasn't going to send the fact that this disguise wouldn't fool anyone, because, you know, humans don't have hooves. But now that you're bringing attention to it, you force my hand. Like my mom always taught me when a movie admits it's stupid, believe it. What's going on? There's no time to explain. We gotta get out of here. You know what's faster than saying all that? Just saying they found you. You know what? On second thought, make my omelet a meat pot. Meat pot. Can I order the potatoes as a side dish? I'll have to charge you full price. <sighs> hey, how about a side of potatoes, my buddy? God damn, this is an episode of Frasier. Oh, oh, I get it. What? You don't want to take me back to the palace. You want to keep me stranded out here forever. Christ almighty on a cracker with grape jam. F***ing hell on a cracker with grape jam and an oyster. They ruined my life and took everything I had. Hey, give it a rest up there, will ya? So previous narration has indicated that the narrator is watching the movie with us. And now the characters are hearing the narrator in real time. Which I'm pretty sure means the characters in the movie should hear us as well. Yet, I've been yelling go suck a cronk at the screen for the last ten minutes and no one's even flinched. Every time Furless Sully raises his arms, you can clearly see his undershirt matches the same brown as his skirt. Or tunic or culottes, or whatever he's wearing. My point is that the same material changes to white whenever he takes off his shirt, or shawl, or damn it, I don't know what the clothes are called, but the carpet don't match the drapes is all I'm saying. 99 monkeys jumping on the bed. 
one fell off and bumped his head. If you never knew that the jumping on the bed song had deeply racist roots, welcome to the Enlightenment. Now someone tell Kronk so he can double dutch with something a little less problematic. Dear God, that's horrifying. At some point, this kind of silliness transitions from Looney Tunes to David Lynchian madness, and I think we have crossed that threshold. No one will be seated during the characters chase each other on the map to big band music while silly things happen to them, but it's totally meta because they can see their own path markers montage. Wily e. Coyote, eat your heart out. How did you get back here before us? How did we, Kronk? Well, you got me. By all accounts, it doesn't make sense. When the only thing in your movie that makes any sense are the meta jokes about how none of the movie makes any sense, perhaps you should have put a little more thought into making some of your movie make sense. Remember how all this started because the llama label looks like a poison label? One problem, none of the potions are labeled, so none of this should have ever happened in the first place. Then I bet you weren't expecting this. <laughs> the idea that Disney just made an evil old lady vaginas are scary joke, and that is somehow not the strangest part of this movie, is all you need to know about the insanity of this film. Don't these potions have to be ingested? And if they're contact-based, how did each potion only break and transform each of these guards individually? Shouldn't it have been a nightmare concoction of all the potions? At least five-eighths of this octopus's limbs are not helping right now. Quick, drain the canal! How do you drain canals quickly? Canals, by definition, don't have a speed setting. <laughs> Two out of three potions agree. Evil people are way over the top. I'm going to kill you! <laughs> Cats. Who's go? You right there, give me a minute. Who's go? If you told me that the finale of this movie would be a shot-for-shot -shot remake of the end of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, I'd have thought it was a Disney movie. Oh, wait. What are the odds that trapdoor laid me out here? What are the odds I excuse your constant efforts to excuse this convenience parade masquerading as a movie just because you're self-aware? Son of a... that's gonna leave a mark. What's his name? Couscous. The food's so nice they named it twice. I'll come off it. Here, come off it. What the f are you waiting for? She went for the setup, reach in your pants, and pull your f out. Donnie was a good bowler and a good man. He was one of us. It is important to note that suddenly, and against all probability, a sperm whale had been called into existence. <laughs> 